Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'd like to invite you to imagine. Imagine yourself as a consumer of a product that's always been your dream. It can be a car, a PC, or may maybe even that suit you saw while window shopping. We've all been there. You've worked hard, saved up money for it, made sacrifices, and you're looking forward to the purchase. You head to the showroom, giddy and cheerful, with your hard-earned money and eyes full of enthusiasm and excitement, only to be met with disappointment, disregard, and be stripped of that excitement. And although your excitement for the product you cherish might remain, what stays with it is a sour aftertaste and an unforgetful, frustrating experience. Ladies and gentlemen, we're Team APU from Japan, and today I'd like to take you with me on a journey a journey of what it feels like to be a Porsche Taycan customer and how that experience will drastically change under the new system we've designed. Take it away, Rizane. All right. So for the first step of this journey, we will be visiting the one key question that our team has developed, which is how can Porsche adopt an optimized system that focuses on delivering the best customer experience? We have thought further and we have come up with three key issues, which involve communication with customers, internal quality assurance, and operational efficiency, which will be, which will be catered to with three strategies. And then the resultant impact would lead to enjoyable customer journey, higher rankings in the China DAS rankings, and upscaled deliveries of the Taycan. Next slide, please. Setting the context, what are the expectations customers have when shopping at Porsche? Sure, they demand high quality products for a premium brand, but the same is applicable for customer service as well. Initially, customers expect a customer-centric approach, which prompt communication with the dealership, which Porsche does fairly well as customers can go to Porsche.com to build their own car before placing an order with an authorized dealer. They are expected to have high sales satisfaction rate and security of purchase, which is also proven true in the case as Taycan Forum yielded proud owners expressions of ex excitement for their new purchases. On the contrary, Paul experienced one-way communication and lack of customer priority as he was the one asking David for updates, which should have been the opposite way. The sales representative was also lacking relevant knowledge on both local regulations and stock as Paul was charged 132% tax duty for a car camera, which he didn't even wish to attach. On top of this, communication with the dealership and company took way too long. The duration for Paul to receive the invoice via email took more than 24 days. These blockades led to the unsuccessful recovery by the dealership. Proceeding to the next slide, based on these negative points of reality, such as one-way communication and the length of waiting time, Paul uh, Paul had to face with other variety of problems, we have developed one key question. How can Porsche adopt an optimized system that caters to delivering a customer-centric journey, which emphasizes understanding and communication while mitigating service failure? Next, Helena will run us through the key issues. Thank you, Tomo. So here are three key issues we identified in the case. First, communication with customers. Second, internal quality assurance. Lastly, operations. We'll be looking at them in more detail in the upcoming slides. So the first key issue is communication with customers. We can split again to three sub-issue. There was inappropriate communication channel. There was no timely update and informing protocols. And lastly, lack of transparent and informative communication. Imagine you're a customer interested in Porsche Taycan and experiencing what Paul is experiencing. Hmm, why do we need to use WhatsApp? Was there no integrated chat from the company itself? Now that I have a problem, does the higher up know about my problem? If so, why are they not acting on it? Porsche must be too busy for me since David is only replying after a few days but I really want to know the progress of my car and if I can still make an update to the option I set. Lastly, what's the full option I can do to the car? I'm a bit worried if David missed any, missed saying something to me. 
Now, moving on to the next slide. To combat these issues, we suggest an optimized ecosystem. Specifically, an update on the website and a new application simultaneously, where the customers can see the framework progress of their car as up-to-date as possible as the current progress. For example, if an air suppressor had just been installed, they can see the air suppressor there where they were unable to see beforehand. If you look at the tab parts for details and the customer taps the parts, they can see updates that the air suppressor has been installed and they can see the function of the parts. Next, there will be a horse because Porsche Taycan, which come from two terms of Turkic origin to mean the soul of a spirited young horse. There will be a percentage of the progress and further updates on the bottom. In the case where there is a delay, the horse will rest, drink water, or do other things with further explanation on the updates. Once manufacturing is done, the horse icon will go back to 0% and become a card that will slowly move to the home icon. In the case there is a delay, the car will, will slow down with further explanations at the bottom. Please note that these designs are not the final product. Next, suppose you're a customer that is interested in Porsche Taycan. Then the customer will choose a showroom, reserve test drive, and the application or test drive will automatically assign a sales representative to be allocated for the customer. Some extra features of this application and website solution is reminders that can, for example, be like just a friendly reminder you cannot change colors after Thursday, June 23, 2022. Or it can be informative. Like, did you know that if you add this part, you'll improve your speed by this much? Next, Tomo, please take it away. Another key issue is internal quality assurance. From the case, it seemed like Paul was the only victim. However, let's take a step back and to look from David's point of view. For the company policy and guidelines, did David clearly understand the company policy and guidelines? Did he know when to notify the manager? As for the customer-centric approach, was David overwhelmed or were there other unknown factors affected which affected his customer service? Lastly, the lack of relevant knowledge. Were there troubles with communication between the dealership and the manufacturer? Or was there a previous training David received, which was lackluster? Proceeding to the next slide. To mitigate this problem, we introduced three proposals. Firstly, the intensive induction and annual training program. The first initial training will be three months. Then employees will have yearly trainings, which will last for three weeks. The program will be split into three parts foundational, strategical, and application. In the foundation stage, employees will have the opportunity to learn the basics how and as to how to manage the dealership variable operations through accountability management. For the second stage of strategy, employees will learn more in-depth knowledge on what they studied in the previous stage, such as how to improve departmental profitability through key performance indicators and best practice guides. Lastly, in the application stage, employees will review and expand on previous course content and apply their knowledge to real life scenarios, such as developing, implementing, and managing sales compensation plans. The next proposal is the Porsche Sales License Renewal System, which requires sales executives to renew once a year to ensure that the essence of quality is not forgotten nor outdated. Lastly, we'd like to propose the Porsche University uh, where those who are ambitious can learn additional skills for possible promotions. For example, an employee can take a UX design course in this university for upgrading to a website sales manager position. Next, Rizani will take us through the third key issue. All right. Um, now, uh, sorry. Now we will be visiting the third and final key issue, which is related to operations. Let's take a step back and look into the shoes of Paul, the customer. So the customer might be wondering that, oh, why is it taking so long for my dream car to come to my house? Secondly, they might also think that, 
oh, is it okay if I make a small change now? Would it really have an impact on the manufacture of my car? This shows that there might be a supply chain issue. Next off, they might be wondering, uh, Paul might be wondering that, is it okay to continuously update without having any limits on the number of updates he can make? This shows that there could be a lack of transparency. Last but not least, Paul might be wondering that, oh, the company made a mistake. So why do I have to pay for the depreciation? Shouldn't they be, be, shouldn't they be accountable for that? Lastly, he might also be wondering that why did he have to drive the 4S model instead of the main model when he went for the test drive in the shop? This shows that there's a lack of customer empathy as well. In the next slide, we will be seeing how we solve these issues by integrating logistics. Please take note that here we would have to communicate with the operational units located abroad. The first step would be to revisit and integrate the mass, communi uh, the mass customization and lean management methods. This would be to increase efficiency and to minimize cost. How can they do so? They can try to incorporate economies of scale when they order the common parts. They should try to order the common parts, such as maybe the Porsche has the same tire or the same seat for all the Porsche models. These can be ordered in bulk and then they can benefit from purchasing economies of scale. Next off, for the customization segment of mass customization, they would be able to use GIT, just-in-time method, for ordering special parts so that although there is a buffer stock level, the required parts come just when they are needed in order to increase efficiency. A key part for this method to be successful would be strong supplier relation and to ensure that their suppliers are also being efficient. They could also try to have Kaizen method in their factory workplace. For the second strategy, we have information symmetry and point of sales integration, where as we had seen before in the app, the customer and the sales representative would be aware of the progress of the manufacturer. This can only be done if there's information symmetry from the side of the operations. Lastly, we would like to encourage that there will be monthly meetings so that there's regular updates between the operational units and the sales division so that the sales division can inform the operations that we did a customer survey. And from there, we saw that the customers are not satisfied with the lead time or they feel that since we have limited locations in near their houses for the shops, they want to do the test drives virtually. So is it possible to, for example, implement CAD or CAM approaches to make the process more efficient and have the customers have the best experience? Moving on, Munta will be explaining the implementation of our strategy. Thank you, Rizani. Um, so next, we're going to be, uh, for the implementation segment of our presentation, we're going to be shortly looking at our KPIs and key performance indicators. We'll be able to indicate that our solutions are working and that we're performing um, at a decent level, um, if not exceeding expectations. If we are able to reach the goal of 100,000 uh, taken deliveries in China in three years. Uh, it, it's been increasing exponentially with each year with 40,000 last year. And so within the next three years, we want it to reach up to 100,000, um, uh, up to 100,000. And so after that, we want to reach the Chinese Dealership as, uh, Association Index, uh, Satisfaction Index of top three in the next three years. Currently, we're ranked 10th. And last but not um, uh, and next we want to reach 100% uh, customer satisfaction. If we aim for the stars, we'll reach, uh, we'll reach the sky. And so if uh, something such as total carbon neutrality can be a dream, then so can uh, an achievable dream to say, uh, then 100% customer satisfaction can also be an achievable dream. And currently, we've seen that we have a number of service failures. And so we want to initiate uh, instant service recovery in order to achieve, uh, in order to mitigate, uh, in order to uh, recover from these different failures. Uh, so uh, how is it, how better can we know that our solutions are having an impact? Well, if we take a, uh, if we take a look at the China's uh, Automobile Sales Satisfaction Index uh, provided by JD Powers, then buyers generally tend to factor online experience, delivery process, and uh, deal with the sales representative as the most important uh, important factor in their purchase. And people who reject it generally consider the online experience, the communication before the visit, and the reception, which is, again, um, uh, talks with the uh, sales representative. And so our solutions today that we've shown totally base and focus towards these issues of online experience, of our communication before visit, of the delivery process, and the um, 
sales representatives. And because our solutions em encompass these different factors, we are confident and we believe that our solutions will have these relevant and uh, relevant impact and achieve these KPI goals. Next, Rizana, please take us through the risks and mitigation. Okay, so our solutions sound great, right? However, it does bring in some risks. The first risk we have identified is that there is a likelihood that the customers might not be fast enough to adapt to the new application, or they might simply be resistant to the new website change. Now, how do we plan to mitigate this? We would like to mitigate this by training our Porsche dealership centers, the staff there, the sales representative there to market the website and the app usage, especially when the customers come visit on site. They will be marketing it. They will be assisting the customers in the process. Second of all, there is still a likelihood that the sales representative, despite all this training, might still not be able to ensure the proper customer journey. Now, in order to mitigate this, we will have a policy where once a month, the hire manager will be doing a routine checkup with the ongoing, the ongoing clients so that the clients also feel like they are being cared for. Thirdly, we can see that there is still, there might be a possibility of service failure despite all the new policies and training. Now, in order to mitigate that, we will be ensuring that the managers take full responsibility and accountability to guarantee fair compensation and to provide a customer service failure recovery report so that future problems don't occur. Last but not least, for the logistic integration, it might not work because there's communication with another facility abroad in order to Cater, to counter that, we would like to empower our research centers in China to test the prototypes and to ensure that there is a smooth integration throughout the whole process. Next, we will move, we'll be moving on to the timeline. So today in the timeline, we've, uh, we've uh, taken a look at it from three different angles uh, for the three different solutions. For the optimized ecosystem, we'll be needing time to do the apps uh, the application and website redesign we we need we need to localize it because we're starting off and focusing on the Chinese market. And then we will need to integrate it with our operation, with our POS system, and then so on and so forth. And then uh, experiment, experimentation is the mother of invention. And so testing is necessary. And so we'll be doing testing for one more uh, for one more quarter after it's ready. Finally, in year two is when we finally plan on launching this. And so from year two, we'll be able to, um, be, uh, we'll be able to see the effect and impact that this has on the different issues we're facing currently. Secondly, for training and motivation, we'll first need the first three quarters to design the annual and induction training. And after that, we'll be starting the staff training itself. We want to take uh, the sales licensing exam at the end of quarter four, and then uh, employees can take it anytime, um, can take it anytime in, in quarter four of the subsequent years. And that should allow for us to see their current state. And last but not least, the Porsche uh, University design will, be, uh, will need some time. So we've given it a year to uh, gather the resources, to get the site up and running, to do the proper design. And then we'll be launching it from year two, where it will be acting as an incentive, uh, as a motivation and incentive for uh, employees to do better, to learn more. Uh, Rizane, can you walk us through the next part, please? Thank you. All right. So let's look at the logistics one more time. Here, as we have mentioned before, this part would involve contacting the factory to ensure that the mass customization and lean management methods are being catered to the needs of the Hong Kong market. Therefore, this process would need a little back and forth communication and checkup, so it would take about two years to implement. Next, for the information symmetry and integrated POS, this relates again to the app and website design. So therefore, once the app and website design are ongoing, we will also be doing our checks and hopefully we can launch it within one year's timeline. Moving on to conclusion. All right, so uh, in conclusion, today we posed for you one key question that asks about the customer journey and how Porsche can, and how Porsche can adopt an optimized system to deliver uh, to deliver on this customer centric journey, and then and finally saw uh, we uh, came up with three pain points. The pain points being that the communication with customers was lackluster and was and was demotivating. There was there were issues of uh, internal quality assurance, and then um, the overall operations and logistics of it were problematic as well. We've solved these issues today for you by redesigning their entire communication channel and system with the app and web redesign by gu guaranteeing uh, with better staff training and doing a 
through a, whole, a holistic logistics integration. And so this will finally imp- result in the impacts of an enjoyable customer journey with the total mitigation of service failure and crisis management in the case that there is any type of service failure. And so with that, we'd like to conclude the presentation. Thank presentation. you for listening. Now it's the time for the Q&A. We have 15 minutes. It's ready. Okay, I, I'll started. start this time. Yeah. Um, so uh, my first uh, very uh, direct question. So in, uh, can you, if you go move to the KPI slides, what was the first KPI in terms of sales units? Uh, um, yes. Uh, by by uh, the first uh, KPI was that by uh, the third year, um, in the third year, we'd like to reach a Taycan um, sales delivery of 100,000 units. Um, we believe that this goal is um, achievable because uh, last in year... In China uh, only? Uh, because I think the existing 40,000 delivery is uh, 41,000 deliveries worldwide. So you want to achieve 100,000 in China alone or worldwide? Um, the 41,000, uh, I believe, was in China alone. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I beg to defer. I think in page 10 of the case, it's a total model distribution. Yep. So no, no worries. I think it's the, uh, it's the worldwide. Uh, so Yes. So, okay, uh, no then problem. in that case, it would be worldwide. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my second, my question in this case actually is, uh, have you uh, uh, done any analysis on the cost escalation or the investment requirement for implementing the strategies that you meant, just mentioned? All right, um, I'll be taking that question. Uh, so we have taken a look in the case. We have taken a look um, throughout the whole case journey. However, in the case itself, there was not, nothing significant mentioned about costs. There were some mentions about revenue. Therefore, we believe that we were given um, the freedom to choose, the, to understand the market and the needs properly to develop programs that would suit the market. We, after proposing this to the higher ups, we would then be thinking about cost. But given the nature of the case, we have not done any planning for cost analysis in this presentation. So apologies for that. No oh, issues. Fair enough. Um, so, um, so the solution that you suggested, uh, I, I would get to emphasis is put on a app and uh, 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 expected customer experience from that. Uh, my personal view is, uh, well, that's a great solution, but still for a luxury car brand like Porsche, while it's not just a car, it's an experience, a direct personal and a bespoke uh, relationship with the end consumer, uh, be it before the sales and throughout the sales service, is sometimes goes a long way in enhancing that sustained and continued relationship. So would you agree or disagree to that and why? All right. Um, <clears throat> thank you for your question. Um, I do agree um, that uh, a direct um, Porsche is a journey. Uh, it is an experience. And that direct um, conversation uh, has a long-lasting and important effect. However, um, in our model, we've added the system for the direct uh communication with the sales representative and uh, manager segments in order to ensure quality and in order to give that uh, convenience to the uh, customers. Because uh, a lot of uh, Porsche is a luxury car brand, as you said, and for a lot of uh, uh, luxury car brand owners, they tend to be quite busy a lot of the time. So they may or may not have the time to actually call, to actually go to the showroom. It might be inconvenient for them with uh, uh, for a number of reasons. And again, in this case, as we saw, the sales representative them- themselves might uh, might be failing to do their duty appropriately to ensure their uh, to ensure that the customer has is has the right experience. And so, to combat that and to give this uh, leeway to give this convenience to our consumers, we've designed this application and website uh, system so that uh, yeah, they ha- uh, they have that leeway basically. Um, I would like to add, so in the graph part, um, Munta, can you go to the graph part of re- re- there's acceptance and rejection? Uh, which one, Hello. That one. Uh, before, yeah. Okay. Uh, before that? The table for, okay. yeah. Yeah. 
Well, um, as you can see in the rejection part, online experiences uh, factors 31%, which is a huge percentage. That is where we are trying to improve the online experience by, for example, having frequent updates to improve the customer understanding of the progress of the car and improve the overall online experience of the customer journey. Thank you for the question. Okay. Uh, my last question uh, for now is uh, you, you mentioned the term of mass customization. Uh, so mass and customization, uh, I think, goes in a bit of an opposite direction. So could you elaborate a bit on that? What did you mean to the, by that? All right. Um, so after doing some research on the Porsche website as well, we have seen that like many other famous car brands, Porsche implements mass customization method. Mass customization is when the basics of the car, which stays the same, no matter like which model it is, no matter what is customized. For example, we have seen that the addition of camera, the addition of rear axle, these are like common. However, some things like all cars have the same windows. So these things will be done in mass. Whatever is the um, same in all cars, they will be produced in mass so that the ones that are common, the production is not disrupted. Second of all, customization is where the customers can add additional features. As we have seen from the case, there is a list of what can be customized. So other than this list, everything else is mass. Therefore, due to um, doing some research on how operations work in general, we have seen that mass customization is the more popular method nowadays. And it's, if it can be done efficiently by implementing lean management methods as well, then it can lead to severe productiv product productivity increases and cost reductions, which would which is something we considered because perhaps making the app and the redesigning might increase cost. So to combat that and to ensure that everything is done smoothly and the customer doesn't have to face a longer lead time, we are implementing mass customization, which is a prevalent method for the car industry, especially. And Porsche is already doing that. We just want to ensure that it is integrated and it is developed in a way so that it caters to the experience of our customers as well. Thank you. Thank you. No further questions. Okay, I have a follow-on question on this uh, logistics integration. Okay, uh, so uh, basically, you talk about the survey. All right, what sort of survey is that, and how that is used to improve the logistic process? Okay, so in regards to the survey, if you take a, um, a very deep look into the case, there is mentions of the fact that the customers are sent surveys at the end of their customer journey. So we have taken that under consideration that they're doing surveys, but what happens to the survey results? Maybe in the survey, the customer said that they're not satisfied with the amount of time it's being taken for the car to be delivered. We don't know what's happening in the survey, right? So Given that the survey will also have some complaints related to logistics, the fact that they were not informed about the state of their car production. So in order to combat the complaints that come into the survey and in order to ensure that the same complaints don't keep on arising in the survey, it is important to review what's happening in the survey. What are the results? And in order to review it, it needs to be a process done co-jointly by both the sales and the operations unit as there is relation of both parties in the survey results. Okay, uh, all right. And CAT CAM, what is it? I mean, what, what, how are you going to use this CAT CAM? You know, it's a, it's a design program, right? So how does it play a role in the, uh, solving this actually, problem? Actually, I would like to defer. CAD is a design program. It's computer automated design and CAM is computer automated manufacturing. So for CAD, it should, in like from the way we see it, CAD would help in the virtual test drive experience because the customer can then like feel the proper design of the Porsche. As the previous judge had mentioned, the customer experience is very, very important. And a car like this, it needs to be exquisite. And the design is extremely important. And the, only the operation side will know how this design is working, right? Therefore, the CAD would be integrating the operations with the expectations of the customer's design. And for CAM, since we're trying to also implement mass customization and lean management approaches, CAM is a model through which the operations unit can use 
computer AI to ensure that the ma manufacturing process can be efficient and that the customization can be done properly as well. Mm. I'd like to add on that the, the virtual experience is not uh, just the, the, the large expensive goggles that uh, will be, uh, that everyone will need to purchase in order to experience, but uh, we are thinking Porsche can uh, hand these small uh, foldable compact ones that your smartphone can fit in. So anyone can experience the VR feature anywhere, uh, regardless of uh, whether they have the equipment, the right equipment or not. Thank you. So you're talking something similar to PlayStation, Gran Turismo game, stuff like that. I yes, mean, if, if, if that gives the experience to the customer, because oftentimes it can happen that you want to do a test drive, but the shop or the, the showroom, it's not nearby. You have to drive miles and miles to actually go to the, to the center, right? So in order to cater to all customers to be more inclusive, we want to go for this approach. <clears throat> Yeah, um, and a lot of times, as we saw in this case, um, just to add on, is that the, uh, although we've tried to ensure our best with these strategies that, um, for example, when you want to do a test drive, the car is there, it might not be there. There is a possibility of that happening. And so in such, um, uh, in such cases, if these are, were to be the case, then um, uh, this virtual test drive experience then could, uh, at least for the time being, satiate the customer's needs and wants. And so... Uh, Porsche is extremely customer uh, focused. And so that's been, that's the case all around the world. However, in China, that's not been particularly the case. And so our strategies, again, even with this is just to make sure that the customer has the best time and the best experience and has all the options. And I don't mean the car options, but all the options of purchasing that give them that premium feeling of being a true Porsche customer. Mm hmm Okay. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Chris, just for interjecting here, I just uh, had an interesting question. I had a question. I mean, uh, when I drive, and I'm, of course, not driving the luxury brand, but even for normal brands, the feel in the road, um, how it feels in the, my steering, how it feels in my legs, and how the whole car feels, that's a big part of that experience and that decision-making behind, behind buying the car. And for buyer persons who are putting up these big bucks for buying a brand like Porsche, the distance between uh, going from their home to a uh, Porsche dealership, um, I, I mean, is there a statistic that shows that they're willing to do that, willing to have that experience virtual? Uh -huh. All right. Um, so personally, I drive a car too, and I totally understand what you're saying. However, you can see that there are question marks beside these um these key, these small sub points we have mentioned, there's question marks because we don't know what the survey results are showing. Again, the focus is the survey. We don't know what the survey complaints are. So we are assuming that these might be some survey complaints. And if they are, we are ready with the plan to mitigate it. We are ready with our ideas. So again, the virtual test drive is just an idea. Since the case didn't give us information of what the complaints are in the survey, we don't know for sure. It's just an idea we are proposing to show that we have thought this through. What if this happens? Then this is our backup plan. So since it's a backup plan, we haven't thought all the nitty gritty through, but it's an idea that's there, which we wanted to present to you as well. Thank you. All right, so, and okay, good. I think the other question that I have is, you know, I think good plan, you know, uh, good ideas. But in the case of Paul, what would you do, you know, to, to, you know, one, you know, restore his trust and two, you know, make him forget about this painful experience and continue to be a loyal Porsche's customer? In the case of Paul, um, uh, in the case of Paul, uh, what we would do um, because this is a severe case with multiple uh, discrepancies in customer uh, service, multiple customer failures, as well as ineffective communication, as po as a luxury band and as Porsche, um, our solution would be first um, the uh, the man David's manager, the manager in general, would take charge of this uh, uh, clientele relationship from that moment fo forward, and that uh, the uh, Porsche uh, model that he was drive uh, that he that did arrive. We, uh, we would request him to maintain uh, to use that 
a car for the time being. And then when his uh, final car model did arrive at the end of the uh, did arrive, then Porsche would uh, compensate for the depreciation cost and, and give him the actual model that he had ordered because Porsche is the one who is liable here for making the mistakes, right? Because it should um, for uh, Porsche needs to focus on delivering that perfect customer experience. And this was be far, far from perfect. And that's the responsibility we're trying to show that we're trying to take as a company. And we're trying to, that's, that's the experience we're willing to give to the uh, customers. Yeah. We also have after sales training. Thank you. Okay, good. You know, speaking about after sales training. Uh, okay. There was lack of time, which is why I couldn't answer in depth. The timer is already up. Oh, time's up. Okay. All right. Fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have to conclude here. Um, thank you very much for the questions and answers. Um, the team for the feedback session in about eight minutes.